Today we are going to learn about ways that bacteria use to acquire genetic variations. As you understand, being biology student, it is very important for living organisms to keep evolving so they can keep up with the changing environment and uh, can survive better on this planet. When it comes to bacteria, they they acquire genetic variation either through horizontal gene transfer, which means that they acquire DNA through movement of genes between different organisms. So we will talk about that in a bit more detail in a second. And the second one is vertical gene transfer, which is true for almost all living organisms. And that means the transmission of genetic material from parent cells to offsprings during a reproduction. In case of bacteria, that the method of reproduction that uh, brings vertical gene transfer is called binary fission when one, pair, when one parent cell splits into two after replicating its DNA. When it comes to horizontal gene transfers, um, bacteria have various um, methods to accomplish that. One of them is referred to as conjugation. The second one is transformation. And the third one is transduction. So this table actually provides you a very good summary of an overview of what these methods are all about. So let's review these in using different images in the upcoming slides. In case of bacterial transformation, what happens is that when bacteria are living in an environment, it could be two totally different type of bacteria. When one of the bacterial cells, one type of bacterial cells, they die and their DNA disintegrate and the pieces of DNA are present in the environment, and those segments of DNA can be picked up by other bacteria that are present, are growing and reproducing in the same environment. And by the, the probability of that is, is very random, but these random pieces of DNA can be acquired and incorporated into the genetic material of some other bacteria. We will call them recipient cells. Now, whatever genes were present on that piece of DNA that was released by the donor and is then picked up by the recipient. That gene can now be expressed into this new recipient cell, which obviously will go through certain change when this gene is expressed. Example of the type of genes that are transferred through this method, the bacterial transformation, uh, are acquiring antibiotic resistance. So maybe this bacteria was resistant to certain antibiotic when its DNA disintegrated. These genes were picked up by another bacteria which was pathogenic but wasn't drug resistant before, but after acquiring this gene has now the ability to resist a certain drug. And this could be any of the drugs that we use to treat bacterial infection. So this is a very important mechanism that bacteria have used from the beginning of time to constantly upgrade their arsenal against us, the human, because you know we are coming up with ways to control infections. So there you have it, transformation. The other method of horizontal gene transfer is transduction, which is really interesting if you think about it. In this method, the donor cell DNA will be picked up by a third party, which is generally a bacteriophage. And when that bacteriophage goes and causes infection to another recipient cell, it could carry a piece of the previous host cell into its cap, you know, its body this part of the viral particle, remember the capsid, it encloses a portion of the bacterial genome instead of its own genome. 
this, so this is not a, a normal virus particle. It's sort of abnormal because it doesn't have its entire gene, gene or DNA, but it's carrying a portion of the host DNA. But nonetheless, when this virus causes infection to another bacterial host cell and injects its DNA, now remember this DNA, not the typical DNA for this bacteriophage, but it's the DNA from this other bacteria that can be incorporated into the recipient cell and becomes part of it. So this, this type of transformation, the, uh, the, the transfer of genes, the transduction is defined as transfer of gene from one bacterial cell to another through a third party, which is a bacteriophage. The third method is referred to as bacterial sex or conjugation. This requires a physical contact taking place between the donor and the recipient cell. Now this is only done by bacteria that contains a cellular structure by the name of pilus. If you remember, you learned about that in your previous classes. The bacteria that contain pilus, they will come in contact with another bacteria that doesn't have a pilus. Now the bacteria with the pilus, we're going to call it the donor cell, can pass on one of its genes by incorporating it into this individually replicating circular piece of DNA inside it. It's called plasmid. It will make a copy of the genes on the plasmid and by contacting itself with the other cell, it, through the pilus, this conjugation tube is generated between the donor and the recipient cell. Now, a copy of this plasmid carrying a gene from this bacterial cell, the donor cell that is, will be transported through the conjugation tube to the recipient cell. Now, whatever characteristic was being controlled by that gene, from the donor is now part of this recipient and the recipient cell has been changed. When these genes are expressed, this cell will have characteristics that are new that were not there in the previous generation of this type of bacterial cell. So to wrap it up, three methods of horizontal gene transfer. Transformation, transfer of random pieces of DNA that are picked up by bacteria that are given off by donors, transfer of genes from one bacteria to another through a bacteriophage, and the conjugation, the bacterial sacs in which a conjugation tube develops between a bacteria with a pilus, which has some important genes, and a non-pilus bacteria, which lacked that particular gene, is now going to be transferred to this recipient through the conjugation tube. That was a summary and here are some slides to give you a little bit more detail of these processes. So conjugation, as we said, is called bacterial sexual reproduction is a mode of genetic exchange in which a plasmid or other genetic material is transferred from a donor to a recipient via a connection. And that connection is the conjugation tube. Now, most of the time, these genes are referred to as F factors. The bacteria that is a donor is F plus, and the one that was recipient is F minus. But once everything is said and done, look at that the recipient has now become F positive as well because a copy of the genome was given from the donor to the recipient through the conjugation tube. That is the transfer of F factor. Sometime bacteria transfer these a HFR, which are referred to as high frequency transfer involves the transmission of chromosomal genes from a donor cell to a recipient. Now, in this case, there is no plasmid involved, if you notice. The plasmid jumps into the chromosome, and when the chromosome is duplicated, the 
plasmid and part of the chromosomes are transmitted to a new cell through conjugation. So the plasmid in this case is not acting alone, but it's incorporating itself into the bacterial genome, the actual bacterial genome, and then it's transmitting itself through that mode. This plasmid chromosome hybrid then incorporate into the recipient chromosome, bringing a huge amount of genetic variation. Transformation, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when a host cell lyses, it releases its genome pieces into the environment, which then can be picked up by some competent cells. And when that DNA is incorporated into that recipient cell, now that recipient cell is going to be different from the one from what it was before it acquired this gene. Transformation. Last but not least, the transduction that we talked about, uh, transfer of genetic variation or transfer of genome from one bacteria to another through this little guy over here, the phage. So most of the time, the transduction just transfer random fragments of disintegrating host DNA and then transfer them to the, the next recipient. However, we are more interested in, in, in medical science in understanding the specialized transduction. And what, what is that? How is that different from the general transduction or generalized transduction? Because in this, this, this event, a highly specific part of the host genome is regularly incorporated into the virus and then it's carried on to the new recipient. In most cases, these are we talking about genes for drug resistance or genes for a toxin production. So you can understand the impact that this will have on the recipient bacteria once it has acquired that genes. So again, various methods used by bacteria to gen acquire genetic variation. Conjugation, transformation, transduction, and here are various examples of the gene transformation that happen through conjugation. Generally, the change brings some drug resistance, resistance to metals, the heavy metals that are oftentimes used to control microbial growth, ability to produce some toxin, some enzyme that can cause damage to the host tissue, hence making the bacteria pathogenic, adherence molecules that allow them to attach to the host cell surfaces, degradation of toxic substances so they could survive in different environments better, and also ability to uptake iron, which is necessary for their survival while inside the host. All of these properties can add to the pathogenicity of a bacteria. It can make it more severe pathogen. It can also make them more drug resistance, and it can also make it harder for our immune system to fight them off. Again, something that bacteria need in a fight against us because we are trying to protect human body from diseases that are caused by these bacteria. And they are constantly working to acquire new properties, new characteristics that can enable them to be better at what they do, which is causing infections. I hope it helps.